welcome back to the second of four sessions focused on Samurai Wallet, a free and open source non custodial Bitcoin wallet. Bitcoin Q&A and me, Brother Rabbit, are taking you back to basics, with today's discussion focused on using the spend tools within Samurai Wallet. Using these spend tools allows for you to be more private when sending and receiving payments. Eyes looking on the public blockchain will struggle to decipher information about your spending habits. Bitcoin Q&A, how are you doing? Good evening, mate. I am well, thank you. And yourself? Yeah, well, thank you. Very well. Thanks for those uh, joining us live in the uh, in the Telegram chat. Yeah, welcome, everybody. Um, I think it's probably prudent that we have a little bit of a recap uh, just to remind everybody or remind those that might have missed the, the first session as to, to why we're here and what we're, we're trying to achieve. Um, so Brother Rabbit and I are holding four um, sessions on Samurai Wallet and the Samurai Wallet ecosystem. Uh, aimed at uh, absolute beginners to um, entice them into into our world uh, and to show them what uh, Samurai Wallet's all about and that uh, Red Wallet isn't uh, always as bad as uh, the Twitter sphere likes to say it is. Uh, so we, we, we last time we talked about um, the wallet itself uh, and Sentinel, the watch-only wallet. Uh, today we're going to be uh, talking about the privacy pres preserving spend tools. Uh, and in sessions three and four, we are going to be talking about Whirlpool, the CoinJoin implementation, as well as Dojo, the Samurai uh, backend server. Wonderful. Um, so we're going to have a little recap first. So last week, uh, or on Sunday, um, we covered uh, basics of, of Samurai Wallet and Sentinel, where you download from, uh, a little bit of a feature overview, how you get started. Uh, as well as different accounts within Samurai Wallet and what they're used for. We went through some basic functions, um, briefly speaking about some UTXO management. Um, we recapped um, some dust attacks as to how they work, what they are and what to do about them. Uh, we took you through backing up your Samurai Wallet, which is awfully important, that your uh, 12 words plus passphrase or your encrypted backup. We touched a little bit on Paynims as well. Um, today's session, Paynims sort of come into their own through the, uh, the different Samurai Wallet spend tool that you have available to you. Uh, and Sentinel, which was the what only uh, application uh, to, to what your addresses or X parts. So without further ado, we'll, uh, we'll jump into this session and uh, give you a bit of a flavor. Just just quickly, if somebody's just heard that uh, recap that you've just done there and thinking, oh shit, um, I've really missed out, mm. where, where can they find uh, week one? Uh, week one, uh, you can head over to the YouTube page for uh, Samurai Wallet, um, or you can uh, hop in the uh, the Samurai Wallet Telegram chat and there's links to it in there, or someone will be able to direct you as to where to go to listen back. There's some uh, some some good sort of walkthroughs to get you started as well. So there's a presentation on screen if you're if you're listening to this. Uh, listening back to this audio, uh, it really is valuable to sort of watch the presentations we're going through these things so you can sort of see for your own eyes as to, you know, where we're taking you and uh, what we're doing. And just a final plug for you can also get the videos on bitcointv.com. Cool. Okay, so so this week we're, we're going to be talking about the, the suite of spending tools within Samurai Wallet. Uh, there are a, a multitude of them. I'm going to be giving you uh, a bit of a heads up on each one, um, some scenarios as to why you might want to choose the different tools um, and also how you can um, use them in your in your own wallet to, to benefit from um, the, uh, you know, the increased privacy that they can offer you uh, when spending out of Samurai Wallet. Um, so I think it's... Uh, prudent to just to give a quick uh, overview as to uh, the concept of a UTXO or a, an unspent transaction output um, as we're going to be sort of talking about the the impact of how these move across the wallet uh, throughout today's transact uh, throughout today's uh, presentation sorry um, so a UTXO is essentially a piece of Bitcoin uh, they have no predetermined size um, and the balance that you see at the top of your Samurai wallet is essentially the sum of all of your UTXOs within your wallet. Uh, you can think of uh, a UTXO as a kind of piece of uh, change within your, your, you know, your, your everyday wallet. Uh, whenever you receive a transaction, you receive um, new UTXOs into your wallet. Depending on the composition of the transaction that you're receiving, that might be uh, one single UTXO or it could be uh, more than one. Um, UTXOs can only be spent um, as a whole. Um, so if, as an example, if you were to um, spend a 1 million sat UTXO, uh, but the recipient only required um, half of that, 500,000 sats, 
uh, that would that transaction would create a uh, new change output or a change UTXO back into your wallet. So you can't sort of uh, divide these up. You have to sort of spend them as whole. Uh, and if the amount that you need to spend is less than that, then you will create a brand new UTXO, which will be the value of your change output. Wonderful. So I think that was a good overview, but what we've got for you now is a little bit of a walkthrough situation of like a typical sort of dumb wallet everyday sort of spend, um, just to give a bit of an idea of how UTXOs move between sort of different transactions and, and what they'd maybe look like on the blockchain. So in front of you now is transaction number one. Now, let's say that um, this transaction, uh, Bitcoin Q&A has sent me some money for mowing his lawn. Uh, so he sent me um, UTXO number four on the screen, which is uh, 425,000 SAS. You can see uh, the second output of that transaction is a change output back to himself. Uh, Q, if you could go to the next slide. So I've received UTX number four, and that's in my wallet. Now I create um, a new transaction myself, transaction number two, and um, I, uh, this transaction, um, I use it as an input for the second transaction. Um, and for this transaction, transaction number two, I use, to, uh, use it to pay for my unhealthy internet website subscription service. Okay. <laughs> so, Q, you can go to um, slide on the next slide, please. Okay. So, for my unhealthy uh, internet subscription service, um, it actually costs uh, 900,000. So, I don't have enough alone for from the UTXO that Bitcoin Q&A sent to me. So I take another UTXO, which was actually paid to me by Bitcoin Q&A's arch nemesis, Bitcoin FAQ. Okay, so this is UTXO number six, and uh, that UTXO is of value 600,000 sats. So I need both of the UTXOs in order to pay for my unhealthy internet website subscription service, okay? So from here, my own pro what are my own privacy flaws? So Bitcoin Q&A gave me UTXO number four and Bitcoin uh, FAQ gave me UTXO number six. So looking on the blockchain, both can likely determine that I've used it to pay for an unhealthy internet website subscription service because what I've done is taken those UTXOs, they've paid them to me and I've combined them together, of which I'm deeply embarrassed about, right? And on top of this, Bitcoin Q&A um, I've, I've told Bitcoin Q&A I've never once accepted money from his arch nemesis FAQ. Um, so Bitcoin Q&A can look on, the uh, look on the blockchain. He can see that he sent me UTXO number four. So he knows that that's, that's in my possession. And I combined it with another UTXO from Bitcoin FAQ. So he definitely knows that I've received money from Bitcoin FAQ. So if we go to the next slide. So... Bitcoin Q&A makes a regular donation to his church, okay? He does this every month, but this month he used uh, UTXO number five to make the donation to his church, okay? So that's of 75,000 sats. Now, on the face, it seems okay. Like maybe he, he thinks this is a, 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 a value transaction that he, that he makes every month, okay? But the church has suspected that Bitcoin Q&A has been up to no good and they decide to do a little bit of analysis on his donation. So after looking through the blockchain, they can see that somehow he is associated with an unhealthy internet website of crypto service. The church can also see that he's associated somehow with Bitcoin FU, who vandalized the church power beds the week before, right? <laughs> um, so Bitcoin Q&A has some explaining to do, and that is all because of my spending habits not because of his but because of my spending habits so although a bit daft hopefully it gives you a bit of an idea as to how looking on the blockchain um, can sort of be deciphered in a way to understand your sort of transaction behaviors what do you reckon q i love that story time with brother rabbit um no but, it, but in, in all seriousness no it's um it, you know to, to the layman that might sound really scary and might sound like that every single transaction you know it is um is going to uh, you know land you in jail or something to that extreme? Um, it, I suppose we 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 use that um, extreme demonstration as a 
um, you know, as a potential pitfall of a sort of, um, using air quotes here, of a, a dumb wallet that just blindly combines UTXOs and does not sort of consider where they, they might come from, um, which I suppose is a, is a nice segue into the, the privacy tools that we're going to be talking about today, I guess. Yeah, it was a bit of a daft situation, donation, and, you know, there was a little bit of, like, information you need to know when you're looking on the blockchain. Um, but when you combine all these things together, then, you know, you get a, a picture build up about spending habits. So, and hence, on to the, uh, the, the spend types. So, the, we, we've sort of classified the two different spend types um, that sort of, uh, the normal spends that potentially a um, typical Bitcoin wallet might do. Uh, we're just going to outline what a, a simple spend means, um, what a full UTXO sweep means, uh, and, a, and a batch transaction where you can pay multiple parties uh, from um, from your single wallet. And then we'll come on to um, the privacy spending tools that are within Samurai Wallet and sort of uh, explain the or outline why they uh, we think that they're superior to uh, you know a, a simple spend in terms of privacy. Um, Am I taking this one by the rabbit or not? I've lost my train of thought. Yeah, you go for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah you go for it. So um, a simple spend um, it, it is called so because um, it is the the kind of typical spend. If you were to look on the blockchain, the the average kind of spend uh, is a single input paying to two uh, outputs. One of those outputs is normally determined to be the spend um, and the secondary output will normally be the change. Um, a simple spend can also have multiple inputs, as Brother Rabbit's just um, demonstrated using his uh, his story time before. Um, and this, these these are the sort of typical type of spends that a wallet will make. Um, chain analysis firms, uh, these are kind of child's play spends for chain analysis firms to analyze and determine which of the outputs are um, the spend and which of the outputs are the change. Um, and they also uh, apply a, a heuristic um, or a, a kind of assumption, if you like, um, called the common input ownership heuristic, where they would assume that if there are multiple inputs to a single transaction, uh, it's assumed that all of those inputs belong to the same participant and thus showing common ownership of all of the UTXOs uh, that are being combined to to create that transaction. So this is the, the kind of the, a typical spend that your average uh, Bitcoin wallet will construct when you're just spending from A to B. So that moves us on to the full UTXO spend. So unlike the previous spend Q just described, uh, this type of spend returns no change. So uh, within Samurai Wallet, there is a way um, to spend a whole UTXO um, also known as a sweep spend, okay? So that type of transaction has one input and one output, so no change. And the way you would uh, the way you'd get to spend a single UTXO in Samurai is by uh, long tapping on your, your Bitcoin balance on the main screen. This brings up your whole UTXO list. Then select a UTXO, single UTXO, which you wish to spend. And then you hit the action and you press send. Now, with this sort of spend, it's normally always assumed from a chain analysis point of view that you're spending to yourself. Because, you know, if you think about it in sort of an everyday sort of situation, you're quite unlikely to take a whole UTXO, um, you know, of an exact amount. Remember, you know, uh, Bitcoin goes down to uh, eight decimal, uh, has um, eight zeros after the decimal place. So, you know, if you're, if you're spending a whole UTXO, it's sort of always assumed to be a self spend. And just to add to that, the another sort of good use case for this uh, type of spend um, would be to uh, as a way to deal with your doxic change from um, a whirlpool sort of uh, initial transaction. So you might be left with a, a really small amount of uh, change from a whirlpool transaction, uh, which we're going to be covering in the next session, that you might not know how to deal with. Um, it might be small enough that you kind of, um, obviously you, you can't go back into whirlpool and you might just want to get rid of it out of your wallet because you don't want to have to deal with it. You could use a, a full UTXO spend to donate that to um, you know your favorite wallet developer to support their their cause if you like and and the, the it's kind of a double win really because you're supporting the developer and you're also sort of ridding yourself of of a change output that you don't you don't really want to have to deal with okay so that takes us on to a, a batch spend so i touched on this 
briefly earlier that a batch spend is where a single entity can pay uh, multiple entities in a single transaction. Um, so this is more of an advanced um, uh, technique, um, but it works well for things like payroll, where a single entity can pay all of their staff uh, to their own wallets uh, within a single transaction. Uh, this has the benefit for the, the entity that's making the transaction that they're saving significantly on minor fees. So rather than having to pay all 10 of their staff uh, through separate transactions and paying minor fees for each one of those, uh, they are consolidating that spend, uh, but still paying to the individual recipients uh, in a single transaction and saving those fees. Um, to, uh, to construct the batch spend within Samurai Wallet, it's really simple. Uh, just go from your typical send screen. Uh, top right hand corner, there'll be uh, three dots. You can tap that and then you can tap on batch spend and then you just single handedly go through and add all of the addresses um, or pay names if you want to do via pay name uh, of all of the recipients that you want to pay. Perfect. So that takes us on to uh, Stonewall. So Stonewall is, uh, I think the first one we're talking about today is one of the samurai spend tools. So what is Stonewall? So Stonewall looks on the blockchain like a fake coin join and now this uses all your own utxos um, and it always uh, has four outputs okay so which is you know thinking about it seems a little bit bizarre for a, uh, a sort of a standard bitcoin transaction having four outputs so that's why it's a fake coin join uh, and then it also has um a user-defined spend so the you're, you're obviously spending to a single bitcoin address and then the three other outputs are decoys okay so there's always one decoy uh, output which is identical to the amount being spent and so this sort of type of spend um, has the effect of um, having multiple different interpretations where before we spoke about simple spend and a utxo um, sweep um, or full utxo spend um, a stonewall transaction has the effect of you know you sort of <laughs> skewing the heuristics and and making it a lot more complicated to work out exactly what's going on so within your wallet when you go to make a stonewall it requires your wallet to have multiple utxos within it and that's because as you can see on screen you're constructing the transaction with as on screen it's actually got eight utxos in this example but you're constructing the transaction with multiple of your own utxos on the input side okay um so therefore wh when you go to construct this type of transaction you need to have enough utxos in your wallet to be able to do so so uh, a sort of rule of thumb when spending a sending a stonewall transaction is to spend uh, less than half your balance and that tends to sort of work out as to to give you enough ut of your own utxos to create that spend and uh, this, we're going to go on to Stonewall X2 in two moments. Um, and this type of spend looks exactly the same as a Stonewall X2. Uh, is there anything I've missed there, Q? Uh, just that there is no um, additional cost to this over the over the just the typical minor fees that are you would pay for any Bitcoin transaction. I guess if I was to be really sort of critical and say, you know, there's people out there thinking that this might sound too good to be true. Um, probably the only downside I can think of with the Stonewall is that due to the increased amount of inputs that the transaction uses to create that, um, to create multiple interpretations that you can see on the screen, is that you you are gonna pay marginally more minor fees uh, to, to include those extra inputs into the transaction. Other than that, um, it's kind of a, an all round win really, that the wallet will do this absolutely by default. There's no extra steps. You don't have to do any fancy coin control. The, the, algorithm, the algorithms that are built into the wallet will kind of take care of this for you. Mm. And so, when when would I when would I how would I make a Stonewall transaction in a wallet? Do, do, is there anything special I have to do to do that? As such, when I sort of go to spend my Bitcoin? No, nope, not at all. You would typically um, just go to the send screen, um, enter the address or the pay name that you want to pay to, enter the amount, uh, set your minor fees, and then uh, the wallet will automatically calculate if it can or cannot uh, create a Stonewall. Um, nine times out of ten, if you've got, like you said earlier, enough uh, different UTXOs in your wallet, then it will just do it for you. If it can't make it make that Stonewall transaction, you'll get a big bold warning 
uh, in the middle of the screen to warn you that um, due to the makeup of your wallet, uh, Stonewall's not possible right now. You know, are you sure you still want to make this transaction? Obviously, you know, just you're fully in control of all of the the Bitcoin within your wallet, so you can make that spend if you want to, or you might sort of heed that warning and just think again and, and maybe um, add some more UTXOs to that wallet and make that spend. Uh, you know, uh, down the line. Yeah, certainly. I think that that brings us on to our our next slide, which is Stonewall X2. So if you can't construct a Stonewall using all your own UTXOs, you can do something called a Stonewall X2, which looks exactly the same as a Stonewall. Q, do you want to take us through it? Yeah, absolutely. So um, rather than give you the, the full spiel, all of the benefits that Brother has just outlined for the Stonewall uh, are absolutely true of a Stonewall X2. Um, uh, the kicker here is that on um, for any sort of chain analysis firm that are um, sort of scrutinizing a, a Stonewall transaction or a Stonewall X2 transaction on the blockchain, they look absolutely identical. So the, the kicker is that um, any Stonewall looking transaction can either be a Stonewall or a Stonewall X2. Now a Stonewall X2 is actually um, two people making that spend to a third party um, it comes with all of the usual decoys uh, decoy outputs that brother uh, talked about earlier um, but you can sort of so for, to use an example if I wanted to buy a, um, a baseball cap from Samurai Wallet uh, brother rabbit and I could uh, collaborate on a Stonewall X2 transaction how, how you would do that we're going to show you in a minute with a quick video um, so we could collaborate to create our own little mini um, mini coin join um, that creates multiple interpretations that will confuse anybody looking at this transaction on the blockchain um, when we are making that spend to Samurai Wallet to pay for the um, to pay for well whatever it what whatever it, you, you want it to be um, the um, only other thing to add I guess uh, correct me if I'm wrong here brother is that with a Stonewall X2 uh, the fees are split 50-50 um, because uh, both parties are kind of getting a good deal out of this in terms of um, they're both sort of adding uh, um, multiple sort of interpretations to their to their UTXO set and sort of uh, crossing the wires, I guess, of the chain analysis firms. Um, have I missed anything there, brother, before I uh, attempt to show no, this video? That's, uh, that's good. Yeah, certainly. So uh, as I, um, as I uh, speak, Q's going to switch the screens for those watching. Hey guys, so it's Q here recording uh, post-production. We had a couple of issues, uh, especially with the stream when we were trying to show Econo Alchemist video. Uh, so I'm just adding that in um, it, using the editing software after the fact, and then we will jump straight back into the live stream. So here we go, let's get started with the video and I will talk you through it. Okay, so we have um, Bob sending a Stonewall X2 to a third party um, with the help of Alice, another Samurai Wallet user. So Bob is going to hit the send button. He's going to paste the address of the uh, third party that he wants to send to, which does not need to be a Samurai Wallet user. <coughs> Bob's then going to enter the amount. In this example, he is sending 700,000 sats. He can then hit review transaction, um, and then he wants to toggle the Kahoot toggle on. Then select Stonewall X2. And finally, uh, he's going to choose online so that he can collaborate remotely with Alice. Bob's pay name list will then show. He can choose Alice's pay name. He can review the final details of the transaction where he can also select his minor fee depending on how quickly he wants the transaction to be processed. And then he can tap begin Stonewall. So moving over to Alice's part of this, um, Alice now knows that Bob wants to collaborate on a Stonewall X2 because they've just contacted each other on, out of band. Uh, so Alice has gone to receive. She hits the three dots in the top right hand corner and presses receive online cahoots. Now this puts Alice's uh, wallet into listening mode and as you can see there it's popped up straight away uh, that Bob wants to create a Stonewall X2 with her. The wallet will now communicate over a, an encrypted uh, communication layer called Soroban and as you can see fairly quickly the the, the transaction has been constructed uh, Bob which Bob can then review and hit send and confirm and the transaction will then be broadcast to the Bitcoin network 
easy as that. Okay, I'll drop back into the live stream. And uh, I think that's that's about it. It's, it is quite simple. It shouldn't really be. Um, it shouldn't really be something that anybody should be too scared about. And um, it sort of. We always recommend to to make every spend a coin join. So whether that be a stone wall, you know, constructing the transaction yourself, a stone wall X two, uh, which uses a collaborator to construct the transaction, um, or onto our third. Um, spend tool, which I believe is Q. Yeah, it's going to be a stowaway. stowaway. Yeah, correct. sorry. Yeah. So, what is a stowaway? So, a stowaway is a is a type of uh, pay join. So, where Paynim A uh, sends some Bitcoin to Paynim B. Um, it, you can only use stowaway in uh, in Samurai wallets, unfortunately. Um, and uh, a stowaway transaction, as you can see an example on screen here, would have a, a minimum of two inputs. So similar to um, how a sort of a Stonewall X2 uses um, another Paynim's UTXOs. Well, in this instance, if I'm paying to Bitcoin Q and A, um, he's even though he's receiving Bitcoin from me. He is providing his own UTXOs um, onto the input side of the transaction. And so the amount being sent in this example is, is actually going to be masked. It's going to be obfuscated from the, uh, from, from the blockchain. And, and it almost looks like a bit of a funny transaction because it's got four inputs in this example on the screen, but two outputs. So it breaks the common input ownership heuristic because... I mean, we know we're looking at a stowaway here, but anybody on chain would usually look at this type of transaction and go, well, that just looks like a normal spend. You've got four inputs into the transaction, one output and another change output. Okay. Um, so the amount being sent um, ends up being sort of masked um, because in this example on screen, um, there's 50,000 sats actually exchanging hands from pain in A to pain in B. But if you look at that transaction, I think you'd struggle to, to sort of to work out that there was actually 50,000 sats exchanging. So this, this can be done a little bit like um, uh, the Stonewall X2. This can be done online. So um, if, if I was to send some Bitcoin to Bitcoin q and I might message him on an encrypted messaging app and saying, uh, Q, start listening. I'm just about to send you a stowaway. And uh, so it can be done online, but it can also be do, done offline. So say me and Q are having a, uh, a, a beer down the, the pub. And as always, I, I always buy the first round. Um, Q, Q always owes me some money. So he, we could construct a stowaway transaction in person. And instead of that communication um, being done uh, online, it would actually be done over QR codes in person from from uh, Android app to Android app. Um, have I have I missed anything there, Q? Uh, no, I think you've covered it. Uh, well, probably just one thing uh, that everybody mm. might, everyone listening might be thinking. Well, how are the how are the two samurai wallets talking to one another in in either the Stonewall X two example that we um, that we used just before um, or this stowaway as well? How how would they sort of communicate? So um, Samurai Wallet uses something called Soroban, which is a Tor communication uh, sort of method of that's how if you're transacting online, um, all traffic is routed through Tor and they sort of communicate the sort of the packets are communicated uh, back and forth to each other while constructing that transaction. Um, so, you know, in terms of sort of privacy, um, that's that's really good because it's over Tor. Also, doing this sort of transaction, you, you don't have to. Um, provide, if I was sending some Bitcoin to q and I, I don't have to ask for one of his receive addresses, you see. All I need to know is his pay him and I need to message him saying, Q, start listening. Or if I'm down the pub, say, Q, get out your, get out your phone and we'll construct a stowaway. So quite a powerful transaction then, then really, especially if you're going from Samurai Wallet to Samurai Wallet. I think uh, you'll agree. Oh, most definitely. I mean, you know, number one, it masks the amount of Bitcoin being sent. Mm -hmm. um, and number two, I don't need to <laughs> ask you for a, a receive address. Um, so it's great. It's a lot easier, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So just a quick recap. Um, if you're sending to another Samurai user, you can use a stowaway. Uh, however, if you want to use a privacy 
um, preserving spend to a uh, wallet that is not uh, a Samurai wallet, you can use uh, Sto uh, Stonewall if it's you're, you're just transacting on your own, or a Stonewall X2 where you collaborate with another Samurai wallet user to uh, spend to a third party, which could be anybody with a Bitcoin wallet. Uh, the final one of the um, privacy preserving spend tools uh, within Samurai Wallet is known as Ricochet. Uh, they believe this is the uh, the OG of the spend tools. Uh, I think this was the first one the guys added. Um, I'm probably going to get corrected on that later, so apologies if, that, if that's wrong. Um, what Ricochet does is it creates uh, additional hops uh, between uh, your origin or your the, the address that you're sending from uh, and the destination that you're sending to. Um, so why would you want to do that? So you might want to do that if you wanted to create some distance from, um, let's say, a, a Whirlpool coin join, uh, and you were spending to a regulated entity such as a um, KYC exchange because you wanted to, um, God forbid, sell some Bitcoin. Um, so you could use a uh, ricochet transaction to do that where rather than just going from your address um, in your, say, Postmix wallet to the Coinbase deposit address uh, to sell some, some of your sats, you could do that using a ricochet, which would add, um, up, I believe, up to four hops, uh, so four different addresses between your send, uh, the address you're sending from uh, and the, the receive address at Coinbase. Um, now, there is a, a fee for the the coordinate the samurai sort of uh, software to uh, coordinate this for you which is 100,000 sats uh, recently reduced down from 200,000 sats um, there are two types of uh, ricochet that you can do uh, there is a standard ricochet or a staggered ricochet uh, the staggered ricochet will always ensure that each hop uh, takes place within a different block um, so consequently a staggered ricochet is going to uh, take a little bit longer than a standard ricochet. So um, if you are going to use this tool, just be a little bit patient with it. Obviously, um, sometimes the Bitcoin blockchain can go, you know, up to an hour without a single block. Uh, and if you're waiting for four blocks um, because you're and you're using a staggered ricochet, then that could take a little bit longer than uh, normal. Um, have I missed anything on ricochet there, brother? No, I think you've covered it quite well. I think, I think um, to say that, you know, it's often asked about ricochet, you know, when should I use it? What, what should it be used for? You, you highlighted then, you know, it's, it's um, probably best best place to be used when sending to a, a regulated exchange. Um, because all it, all it was doing is, you know, creating hops between the origin of your Bitcoin and the destination, isn't it? So for, for me, on a sort of regular spend basis, or if I'm paying for a service, um, I think I would prefer one of the other spend tools than, than ricochet in that example. Yeah, um, I would, because I would uh, tend with the to, other spend tools, it's sort of, yeah. I was just going to say, I would, Sorry, I would tend to agree. Um, and also just a quick question as well that we see a little bit in the Telegram chat, which hopefully you can answer, brother, is that if they, if somebody was to use a ricochet, um, are they sort of losing custody of that Bitcoin along that sort of route of hops or what happens there? No, not at all, not at all. So um, segregated away, buried inside your Samurai wallet, um, you still you still have access and control of the the private keys, so to speak. But um, all Ricochet is sort of doing is um, using your own wallet for those hops. So it's just that those hops are hidden um, within the the UX of the of the the wallet app. So uh, while while that uh, that payment is hopping from one to the next to the next, before it gets sent to the final destination, it's always in control of your wallet. So it's not like when you when you send a ricochet uh, payment it's not like it leaves your wallet and it's gone forever yeah so uh, when you create a ricochet which again you you do quite simply don't you you sort of you go to the send button um you you choose the recipient you know you paste in the bitcoin address just like you you would usually uh, and you enter in the amount and you select ricochet and then you hit send pretty much um you know so it's quite simple to do and you you don't really have to give much you don't give any thought to the the hops involved uh, but just know that before it hits the destination, you know the the receive address, um, that Bitcoin is 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 still within your uh, your uh, possession, i.e., controlled by your own private keys. Awesome, right? So that kind of caps off all of the uh, privacy spend tools. So shall we hit them with some uh, top tips before we take some questions? Yeah, definitely, definitely. So I think we covered this one last time, but it's. 
what is good um, for privacy uh, privacy reasons is never never reuse addresses. So if you're uh, giving a receive address to anybody, um, then you hit that receive button and it generates a new receive address. Now, the beauty also of some of the tools we've discussed today is that if I was receiving a stowaway payment, for example, well, by default, that's received to a new receive address and that's all managed for me by Samurai Wallet. Uh, another thing that we heavily believe is that, um, you know, Stonewall using sending Stonewall transactions should be a minimum. So you should be aiming to make every spend a coin join. And there's a little link at the bottom there, um, which is a telegram group called make every spend a coin join. So when you can't construct a Stonewall yourself, you can always construct a Stonewall X2. And so there's a telegram group set up where pay nims are exchanged and, um, you know, you can go on to that Telegram group and say, oh, I need a, a collaborator to help me send a Stonewall X2. So for the second point, always try to make Stonewall the minimum. And if you can't Stonewall, um, you know, you've got Stonewall X2 available to you. Or if you're paying to another Samurai user, use a Stowaway. Awesome, good stuff. Okay, so moving on, uh, we covered this last time briefly, but again, worth reminding, um, it's it's prudent to uh, label all of your incoming uh, UTXOs, um, just so that when you are constructing spends in the future, if you uh, want to do, um, say, a single UTXO spend, perhaps, uh, if you've got some robust labels uh, on your UTXO list, then you can make a sort of educated decision as to which one of those uh, UTXOs that you might want to spend to, depending on who the recipient is and what information that could or could not share about you. Uh, again, just a reminder about Ricochet, uh, probably worthwhile doing it, uh, doing a Ricochet if you are spending to a regulated exchange uh, that may look uh, unkindly on um, sort of uh, coin joins uh, or that sort of uh, behavior within the wallet. Uh, next one, make some make use of low fee environments. Um, we until fairly recently, I haven't looked at the mempool for a couple of days, uh, but we've been seeing uh, common bouts of one sat per byte transactions, uh, which is the kind of the cheapest that you can can get transactions uh, being confirmed into the next block. Um, so what I would say is is where we have fee environments like that, um, and if you've got say a spare phone that you can put a second samurai wallet on it. Um, just just have a practice at using some of these spend tools that me and brother have just been talking about to do some do some different stowaways or Stonewall X2s uh, between the two wallets. You know, it's gonna, it's going to cost you uh, a couple of hundred sats at best. Uh, alternatively, if that sounds a little bit too expensive for you and you like to keep hold of those sats, um, you can make use of the testnet feature um, within the wallet um, to basically do as many of these at absolutely zero cost. Um, you can get free testnet Bitcoin from a multitude of different faucets uh, on the internet um, and you can transact to your heart's content to make sure that you're comfortable with these tools and how they work um, before you dive in uh, onto the main chain. Great. And we've spoke about lots of different spend tools today um, and as well as some sort of simple, simple types of uh, transactions. And it's all quite well at speaking about them, isn't it? And, and, you know, talking them through how you do them, but sort of nothing quite beats um, sort of either checking your own transactions on chain or, or looking up some transactions on chain to get a bit of an idea um, of, you know, how it works and, and how Bitcoin sort of moves across the blockchain, if you like. So um, a good way to do that is to use a website, um, which is on screen now, as you can see, called uh, kycp.org. And this is a really handy, powerful tool you can use um, to type in a, a, a sort of a transaction ID and it gives you sort of like a, a transaction graph um, and sort of it sort of displays for you the sort of the, all the different interpretations that transaction can have uh, and it gives you some stats on there as well doesn't it Q as to sort of uh, the I guess the, is it is it the entropy of the uh, of the transaction yeah the kind of um, how many ways that that transaction can be uh, interpreted um 
to to anybody looking on the blockchain basically so kind of uh the, the, i suppose to keep it as, as simple as possible um i'm probably going to get laughed at for this later but the more sort of uh green lines and things like that that you've got on the screen the the higher the entropy of the transaction and the more ways that it could be interpreted you know is it is it one person paying to five people is it two people paying to five people is this a five person coin join there's this you know a multitude of different ways that each individual transaction can be um interpreted depending on the the makeup of how that transaction is constructed yeah yeah i think the tool also tells you you know in in the so for example the transaction we're looking at now we can see that there's no address reuse right so the the tool also will tell you in certain transactions if if an address within that transaction has re been reused or whatnot so it really allows you you know to either look at your own transactions uh, get a bit of a better understanding as to how they can be interpreted and also you know pick some random transactions uh, on the blockchain and try and work out oh well, it looks like that person sent to that person well what if I look up a Stirway transaction? Um, well, you won't be able to find one, uh, or at least you'll struggle to. But if you were to be able to uh, analyze your own Stirway transaction using this tool, you can say, oh, I can see how this is different to um, that type of simple spend. Yeah, definitely. I'm a visual guy myself, and, and seeing it on screen kind of uh, brings it to life and, and sort of makes uh, makes me, anyway, understand the how powerful these tools can be at thwarting um, chain surveillance firms, I guess. Um, and the, the last two uh, top tips are exactly the same as the ones we mentioned on Sunday. Uh, use the tools, like I just said. Uh, testnet is completely free. Um, you can practice to your heart's content and get really comfortable with all of these spending tools um, and ask questions. Again, we've got all of the resources, uh, the three links uh, down here, um, the documentation website, the Telegram room that we're broadcasting from right now, um, and uh, the Every Spender Coin Join group where you can find um, Stonewall X2 uh, collaborators. Um, and just lastly, if you're unsure about anything, pop into this Telegram group, the Samurai Wallet main uh, channel. Um, and ask uh, any question. Um, there is no stupid question, only the one that you don't ask. Wonderful. So talking of questions, uh, let's have a look to see if we've got any in here. So we've got a question in the chat that is asking, is kycp.org available via Tor instead of ClearNet? So to the best of my knowledge on that one, uh, I believe it's ClearNet only. Obviously, you can... You can uh, I think stopping opening up in tour, but as far as I'm aware, uh, yeah, just clear net. Yeah, I don't think there's a uh, onion address for KYCP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's another question here. Um, a Q, can you answer this for us? Uh, is a ricochet uh, transaction broken up into more UTXO, or is it just four self transfers? Uh, so it would um, a standard ricochet would be uh, four, I guess, yes, yeah, four transfers of the um, uh, amount, the final amount being transacted. I guess, um, with the exception of the fee being taken out in the first hop. However, if you were to connect to the Samurai Wallet pay name um, before making the transaction, um, that has the added benefit of. Um, when you construct the ricochet thereafter, um, the fee is taken out um, across each hop. So the fee is divided up into, say, four, and 25% of that fee is taken out at each hop. So that has the um, the result of each um, each hop of the ricochet transaction uh, looking like a uh, one input, two output transaction. So it's you know it's distinctly better. So I would advise everybody to connect to the Samurai Wallet Painting first before you create a ricochet transaction. And if I just um, pop back to the ricochet, um, there you go. That's that's an example of uh, a ricochet where the user was connected to the Samurai Wallet paying in because there is a, um, these smaller lines here, 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 and here are the fee um, going to the uh, Samurai Wallet uh, developer um, paying in address. Great. And uh there's another question here that um, is slightly frustrating, I, uh, I find as well, and, and it, not, not in a bad way at all, but um, just from a user perspective, wanting to like um, grasp hold of the, the spend tools straight away when downloading Samurai Wallet. Uh, and that question is, um, you know, when you first download a Samurai Wallet, um, how can you receive Bitcoin from another Paynim? 
um, you know, because we've described the tools today using PayNIMS and, and you know, using the, the tools available. Uh, and the simple answer to that is, is unfortunately, you can't because you, you, if you were to uh, receive from a PayNIM using a, a stone wall, um, then, uh, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> they all start with S, don't they? If you were to were to receive want to receive a uh, stowaway transaction, you need to be able to provide um, a input into that transaction. Now, if you've got no Bitcoin in your wallet, um, you can't do that. So the alternative is for the sender um, to send you a uh, either a Stonewall themselves or a Stonewall X2 themselves, but. As a, a new user downloading the wallet, as it currently stands, um, you, you can't be in cahoots with somebody else until you've actually got Bitcoin in your wallet. So hopefully that answers that one. I'm not seeing any more questions in the chat. So you do want to give them a, 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 a sort of a heads up on what's coming in week three and four. And then if there's no more questions popping into the chat, we'll, we can uh, we can wrap it up. Yeah, most certainly. So um, if you're listening to this after the stream, uh, consider joining us on Telegram for the next session, uh, where we'll be diving into Whirlpool, a uh, summarized implementation of CoinJoin, which allows users to break deterministic links to their Bitcoin's previous on-chain history, as well as provide forward-looking privacy. Uh, for the final sessions, uh, we'll round up the final session, sorry, uh, we'll round it off with Dojo, uh, the Bitcoin full node implementation to back your Samurai wallet, allowing you to choose your own rule set to follow validate all your incoming transactions and gives you the power of 24 seven whirlpool remixes while you're chilling out in the hot tub have i missed anything q should we say goodbye uh, no that was beautiful as always uh, it's been a pleasure man and um i will look forward to chatting you to you in the next session see you soon take care <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.